The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we will play the recording. Listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi. I would like to make a reservation for a round-trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the 31st of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the 10th, but for your returning flight, the 31st of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the 31st. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around 20 to 25 percent more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the 1st of November. There are openings for first class that day, too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the 31st? Maybe the 30th or 29th? Let me check. You can fly on the 29th, but not the 30th. Hmm, the 29th is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. OK. How about if I book a return date on the 29th? and add my name to the waiting list for the 31st. Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the 30th also? I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the 31st. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be £565, not including tax. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 6 to 10. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over £600. OK, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information. Name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Connolly, student ID 92. One, two, three, zero, two, zero. Your phone number, please. Eight, seven, zero, five, two, one, zero, nine. Please tell me your mailing address. Three, five, four, Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now, just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question. What happens if for some reason I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. 
However, if your cancellation is before 24 hours of takeoff time, then you can reschedule your flight for another day. If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a lecture given by a counselor. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi, I am your counsellor for this year. Today we will visit the facilities available to you on our campus. As students, you should take advantage of everything you have available to you. How many of you like sports? Well, I hope most of you do, because our school has great sports facilities. We have an indoor gym with state-of-the-art equipment. First, I want to tell you about our basketball facilities. There are two basketball courts. Both are full court and open for student use. We offer basketball leagues that all students are invited to join. Just sign up with a team. Usually, there are games on the courts, but during league time, only the teams are allowed to use the courts. The basketball courts are open 24 hours a day. If you want a job, you can be a referee at the games. Next, I want to tell you about the tennis facilities. We have five tennis courts available for student use. The tennis courts are open every day, 8 a.m. until 10 in the evening. You should call ahead to reserve a court because they are very popular and can often be booked weeks in advance. There are rackets and balls available for rent at the front desk of the courts. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool that is open for students and the general public. There are also showers and locker rooms available. The swimming pool is open every day, 9am until 7 in the evening. There are openings for the position of lifeguards, so if you are looking for a job in the sun, this might be good for you. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. There are also two weight rooms and a gymnastics room. The weight rooms have all the standard equipment available. Please check with the gym to see the open hours because they vary from time to time. The gymnastics room is usually not open for individual users because there are almost always classes held in the room. However, if you are interested, you may sign up for gymnastics classes. Plus, if you like martial arts and boxing, we offer classes for everyone, from beginners to advanced students. Please check the schedule for availability. There is everything available, from Chinese wushu to Brazilian wrestling. I will talk for a brief moment about our library system. Our campus has three libraries available to undergraduate students. One additional graduate library and one faculty library. The libraries are open daily until midnight except for during testing periods when the libraries will be open 24 hours. Please look on a map to see where the libraries are located. All students with a valid ID can check out books with a maximum of 10 books at a time. Books can be checked out for a two-week period and then renewed for one month maximum. After that, there is a $1 fine per week that the book is overdue. 
I will repeat that. There is a hefty one dollar fine per week. So it is a good idea to return books on time. If you lose a book, then you will have to repay the library for it, plus a fine. If you damage a book, most likely you will have to repay the value of the book. So please, enjoy the library facilities, but take care of the school's belongings. The library is also equipped with 200 computers for student use. They are all internet ready and available for use. You must sign up at the library for one hour time slots. You may sign up for up to three consecutive slots at a time. No one can use the computers without first signing in at the library. That is it for now. Thank you for your attention. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a student, Alex, asking his tutor for advice about essay writing. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 21 to 27. Hi, Alex. Come in. I gather you wanted some help with writing essays. Yes. I'm finding this first term difficult, and I'm worried about the assignments we have to do for January. Well, let me see if I can help. You shouldn't panic about it, because essay writing is a very straightforward process, really. What it involves is organising the information that you want to include. You shouldn't have more than you can easily manage within the word count. Make sure you haven't got too much or anything irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You need to look at that and work out what you need and what you don't need before you start. And then you just have to think about how you're going to put forward your argument. Oh, that sounds very straightforward when you put it like that. <laughs> but I'm worried I haven't got the necessary skills for writing an effective essay because English is my second language. Mm. Well, perhaps you misunderstand the skills you need. You need to be able to analyse your data and then I would say the skills of interpretation and expressing yourself are important. Perhaps it's this last one that bothers you, but the more essays you write, the more you will develop these skills. Yes, and I don't quite know how to improve at that. Though, as you say, I know practice will help. Mm. And I need to make sure I've got everything ready before I start. Yes. What is vital to good essay writing is preparation, so make sure you build in enough time to do the research you need. Are there any other sources I can use to help me with essays? Yes. You should go to the library and look through the reference section, because there are books that focus on the style we use in academic writing, and those will help you a lot. The other thing that you should think about is what happens when you've actually written your essay. Too many students just complete their work and hand it in, whereas what you should be doing is making sure that you edit it as thoroughly as possible. 
Oh, yes, that's a good idea. Then I'd pick up any mistakes and also see if it reads logically. Exactly. Uh, the other thing is, again, what a lot of students do is get their essays back, look at the marks, then just file it away. Hmm. They don't realize that if they checked it through and looked at what the tutor had written, then they can learn from their old essays. Yeah, I can see that's a good idea. So, is that okay? You can always come back to me. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 28 to 30. Actually, there were a couple of other things I wanted to ask you about essay writing. Uh -huh. I had had a few thoughts of my own about what I should do, such as really taking good notes when I'm reading, because that helps, doesn't it? Mm, I think it improves your knowledge rather than your actual writing. Uh, but one tip I can give you is to try and not read too much. Otherwise, you end up including irrelevant material in your essay. Remember to stay on task. Yes. Sometimes I have problems interpreting the questions correctly, or the whole question seems overwhelming to me. Mm. What I try to do is highlight the key parts and divide it into smaller chunks so I can manage it. Well, you might find it useful to break it down even further by making sure you understand all the words perfectly before you start. Uh, things like assess or comment and such like. Yes, I see. Sometimes, after an objective analysis, the question actually asks you for a subjective opinion. But you must remember to support your arguments, if that's the case. Mm. Um, one final comment I can make is about using your own words. You must try to do this as far as possible. You're expected to summarise what you've read, not just string together a list of quotations. In fact, you shouldn't have too many. Just use them where it's really important. OK, thanks. Do you read other students' essays when you've finished? No. Why? Is that a good idea? Well, you can confuse each other, so I'd advise against it. But it's up to you. OK. Thanks very much for your time. And that is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You're going to hear a lecture on some useful information for your travelling around Britain. Listen to the first part of the lecture and complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. 
Good afternoon, and welcome to the session on Britain. This afternoon, I would like to provide some useful information for you about travelling around Britain. Britain has over seven hundred tourist information centres. You will find them at major ports, airports, stations, historic landmarks, and towns and holiday centres. So just look out for this sign that says "Tourist Information." The staff will be able to answer your holiday queries, as well as provide essential maps, guides, and brochures. Tourist information centres at major ports and airports in London, and addresses of British Tourist Authority European offices, are all listed on the tourist information centres. Now let's talk about the telephone in Britain. You know, Britain is well supplied with public telephones. Street kiosks take ten pence coins. In city centres, mainline railway stations, airports, and central London underground stations, payphones and card phones are in operation. For the latter, small plastic phone cards are used, and these come in ten, twenty, forty, one hundred, and two hundred units, and can be bought at post offices, news kiosks, station bars, and shops where the green and white card phone sign is displayed. When using the different public telephone systems, make sure you read the dialing instructions carefully. Now, let's see the banks in Britain. There are twenty-four hour banks at London's two main airports. One is Heathrow, and the other is Gatwick. Otherwise, banks are normally open from nine thirty to fifteen thirty hours, Monday to Friday. Barclays Bank and National Westminster Bank offer a Saturday morning service at some of their branches. National Jara Bank. Has forty-two bureaux de change located in post offices throughout the country in main tourist areas. Opening hours are nine o'clock to seventeen thirty weekdays, nine o'clock to twelve thirty Saturday mornings. One exception to this is the Trafalgar Square office, whose opening hours are eight o'clock to twenty o'clock weekdays and Saturdays, and ten o'clock to seventeen o'clock on Sundays. The bureau de change services. Are available to overseas visitors. Visitors can change their money there. You can also change money at bureaux de change, large hotels, department stores, and travel agents. Be sure to check in advance the rate of exchange and the commission charged, as these vary considerably. Wherever possible, you are advised to use a bank or bureau de change, which conforms to the BTA code of conduct. In most cases, this is indicated by display of the code. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.